Welcome to Design Fusion's Solid Edge blog. This is part one of a two-part series introducing users to advanced sketch commands and tools. In part one of this blog, we'll introduce you to the ellipse commands, the free sketch command, the synchronous draw command, the auto scale sketch command, and grid commands. The ellipse commands are located on the circle by center point pull down menu. The ellipse by center point command. This command draws an ellipse using the center point and two edge points. The center point and the next point define the half length of the primary axis and the rotation angle. The last point defines the secondary axis. We also have an ellipse by three points command, which draws an ellipse using three edge points. The first two points define the length of the primary axis and the rotation angle. The last point defines the secondary axis. Let's have a look at these two commands in Solid Edge. For this demonstration, I'm using the synchronous environment. If you use the ordered paradigm, the commands use the same steps. The only difference is that you'll need to select the sketch command first. We'll start with the ellipse by center point command first. I will first lock to a base reference plane and use a top down view. The first point I pick is the center point of my ellipse. Then I use the second point to control the angle and the half length of the primary axis. The last point I use to define the secondary axis. To make it easier to dimension the ellipse, ensure that you have your silhouette point and your ellipse axis point options turned on in the IntelliSketch dialog. This makes it a lot easier to dimension your ellipse. And as always, you can enter in the desired values. Let's undo this and create an ellipse by three points. I first select the ellipse by three points command. The first point you pick is your start point of the primary axis. The second point you pick will position the angle and control the length of the primary axis. The third point you pick controls the secondary axis. Once again, I can easily dimension the ellipse as I did the previous one. Next, we'll look at the free sketch command, which allows you to freehand draw a sketch. Solid Edge will then convert the freehand drawing into precise geometry. You can specify which of these elements you want to draw using the command bar. I'll demonstrate this shortly. The free sketch command is located on the pull down menu under the line command. To draw with free sketch, you first choose the free sketch command. On the free sketch command bar, you set the element type buttons for the types of shapes you want to draw. Set the adjust option to on or off. When the adjust option is on, the software adjusts the line so that they are horizontal or vertical when you finish drawing. When the adjust option is off, the software interprets the exact movements of your cursor. For example, if you draw diagonally, the line displays as a diagonal line when you finish drawing. You then drag your cursor to draw a shape and then release the mouse button to complete the drawn element. The free sketch command is in both ordered and synchronous. If you are working in synchronous, you also have the draw command. The draw command is located above the free sketch command. For someone on the go or just wanting to sketch out a quick design using the stylus, the draw command will convert your freehand sketch into analytic geometry. 
If you happen to have a Surface Pro that you're using with a stylus, this is a really handy command. The command provides both the sketch and trim options in one convenient menu. It's a great tool to sketch your ideas on imported images and you can convert your freehand sketches into solids. Let's have a quick look at this in Solid Edge. I'm starting this demo in a sketch environment inside the ordered paradigm. The free sketch command is located under the line command. When I select it, I can then select the different options that I want in the vertical command bar. I'll start with the adjust option turned on and I'll select the rectangle option. You'll notice that I can just freehand sketch out a rectangle and it is converted to an actual rectangle. Next, I'll turn on the circle option and freehand a circle. Notice it turns it into a circle for me. Next, let's do a line and an arc. Notice the results. When I turn off the adjust option and freehand a diagonal line, I get a diagonal line. You'll want to be careful if you go all over the place since it may convert it into multiple line and arc segments. So keep your lines relatively straight and you'll get straight lines. As mentioned, the free sketch command is in the ordered and the synchronous paradigm. Let's delete this sketch and we'll transition into the synchronous paradigm. You'll notice that in synchronous, the free sketch command is still under the line command. I'll select the command and you can see that the options are the same as in the ordered paradigm. But we also have the draw command in the synchronous paradigm. The draw command is designed to be used with a stylus, but you can use a mouse. This is ideal for a Surface Pro with a stylus, but in this demonstration, I'll use my mouse. Notice the results as I create a few simple profiles. I can also use a trim command. Notice that I'll create the line and select the trim option. I then drag across the geometry that I wish to trim away. It's a great little tool for drawing if you have an image. For example, you can draw around the outside of the image and it will convert your freehand sketching into actual sketches. Just remember that the draw command is only available in the synchronous paradigm. The next command is the Auto Scale Sketch command. The Auto Scale Sketch command scales all sketch geometry at the same ratio from a single driving dimension edit. The command is located in the Draw group. In the image you can see that we have a sketch with a single driving dimension and several reference dimensions. If the command is turned on and I triple the size of the driving dimension, so it goes from 1.5 to 4.5. All the other values also triple. Auto scale sketch only works when a single driving dimension is present. If the auto scale command is off, the edit behaves as usual, meaning it will only modify the single selected dimension. The sketch zooms to fit completely after auto scale. Note that only the sketch zooms, not the entire model. So if you're using auto scale on a sketch within a larger model, only the sketch will zoom to fit. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. I'm doing this demonstration in the ordered paradigm, but it can also be done in synchronous. I'll first edit into the sketch. Notice that the sketch has a single driving dimension. With the auto scale turned off, I'll go and change this dimension. Notice how that only the driving dimension changes while the driven dimensions stay the same. This is the typical behavior. Let's undo this and turn on the auto scale sketch command. Then I'll repeat the edit of the driven dimension. Notice that with auto scale turned on, you will get a warning letting you know that this is turned on. You can turn this off, but I recommend that you don't because it only gets activated if you have a single driving dimension. 
I'll click OK to this and notice it fits the screen and enlarges everything equally. I'll close the sketch and hit Finish to complete the edit of this sketch. Solid Edge has a grid overlay option. This allows you to sketch with the assistance of a grid overlay. You can control the grid spacing display mode and origin, and you can snap to a grid point. Elements are not constrained to a grid, but you can use them for alignment purposes. The grid overlay is available in part on the sketching tab, assembly layout, and draft. This slide shows the grid commands available on the draw bar. You have the option to show the grid or hide it. You can turn on the snap or turn it off. You can turn on the precision key in for the XY positions. You can reposition the origin or you can zero the origin. Users can also control these options in the grid option dialog. The grid option command displays the grid option dialog box, which you can use to do the following. You can turn the grid on or off, turn alignment lines on or off, turn snap to grid on or off, and turn coordinate displays on or off. You'll notice that these options here are the same as the commands from the previous slide, so you can set these independently or set them in the dialog. The grid option dialog box is also where you change settings for grid appearances, such as line color and major minor line spacing. Let's have a look at this in Solid Edge. Grid options are available in both ordered and synchronous paradigms. Using an ordered example, I'll go directly into the grid options dialog. I'll turn on these options. Notice the commands that I have checked here are also appear independently on the draw group. This is useful because you don't have to keep going into the dialog. My major spacing right now is set to 50 millimeters with an increment division of five. Notice that this creates major lines that are 50 millimeters apart divided into five making each one of these smaller sections 10 millimeters. If I create a two-point rectangle, you'll first notice that I'm seeing actual values displayed because I've enabled the precision key in. You can also turn on the snap to points option. As I draw my rectangle, notice how it's snapping to grid points. You can use any of the draw commands. Here I'll use the line command and a circle command along with the grid overlay to create some sketches. For example, maybe I wish to create a quick layout for a simple circuit board. Users can use the grid overlay to aid in creation of any sketch or profile. Want to learn more? Look for the upcoming blog of Advanced Sketch Commands and Tools, Part 2. If you need additional support, contact our support team at support at designfusion.com or call us at 1-877-215-1883.